After seven seasons in Ames, Iowa, it was the end of the road for Iowa State head coach Paul Rhodes as he was told to hit the road and don't come back no more, no more, no more. What you say? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, now it becomes the Matt Campbell era. And I'm not saying the Big 12 is like the SEC in terms of competition, but the Big 12 is certainly not the Mid-American Conference either. And Campbell's going to find that out the hard way when the season begins. But at least there are some skilled players on the offensive side that could pull Iowa State into the right direction. And that does include the former Lawton, Oklahoma product, Mike Warren, who led all freshman running backs in the country just a year ago in rushing with well over 1,300 yards. Even though the Cyclones only won three games a year ago, it's really difficult to blame the likes of the ground attack for that. I thought that was the strongest part of the team. Ground attack was good. Passing game, too conservative, too many short passes. They need to go more downfield. So hopefully, if you're Iowa State, you'll see Alan Lazard um, continue his mastery. All Big 12 receiver from 2015, six TD catches and nearly 900 yards receiving. Jawan Wesley could really help out in that regard. There's another wide out. And taking a look at the quarterback play, you remember last year, Joel Lanning came in midway through the season when the Cyclones were getting pounded at Baylor. Lanning comes in. Iowa State goes on a 20-0 run. They lost the game, but it was more competitive of a game thanks to Lanning, so he definitely has an upside to him. Not so much of an upside, though, for the offensive line. Only one full-time starter back. That's Jake Campus, left tackle. So this is the biggest area of concern. The Cyclones happen to retool the offensive line where they'll have some new full-time starters up there. Well, the only remedy for winning is, well, winning which has been rare in Ames, Iowa, over the past three seasons. Now you know why they had to make a coaching change, and that included just three wins a year ago, which were against Northern Iowa, Texas, and, of course, Kansas. A year ago, Iowa State was 105th in the country in total defense. Obviously, the only direction is to go up, and they're going to have to do some work on that defensive line. Nearly every starter gone from a year ago, but they do return the Big 12 Defensive Newcomer of the Year after his terrific 2015 mass defensive tackle, Damon Tucker. Linebackers, more experience there. Not as much worry entering this season from that experience standpoint with uh, Wooly Harvey back, and also, too, you have uh, Jordan Harris. Now, this is the one area we're about to talk about where Iowa State does have some much-needed depth. They should be okay as far as secondary. They need to be because last year, um, with the guys that they had, the scheme that they ran, uh, teams were able to pass on them at will. So we'll see if uh, Brian Peavy from his corner spot, who has the potential, can have a better year along with uh, Kamari Cotton Moya from the uh, safety position. The road. Iowa State better get familiar with it early on because four of the first seven games are away from Jack Trice Stadium. That does include games two and three against Iowa and TCU, who should both be ranked in the top 20 to begin 2016. The second half of the schedule, an intriguing game against my Sooners on a Thursday night in early November. Yeah, you got to love the power of cable television. There are a few individual players who will make an impact for Iowa State this season. However, in terms of overall talent, the Cyclones are still playing catch-up to the majority of the Big 12 teams. I look for Iowa State to do what they did last year and win just three games.